I do want to start off by thanking all of you. Uh, it just gives me great pleasure uh, to welcome all of you to San Angelo. We are honored uh, to have you join us uh, to continue our plans for the future of the, of the uh, Porsche Plains. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you uh, in accomplishing our goals. Y para nuestros amigos de México, me da gran placer dar la bienvenida a todos ustedes a San Angelo. Tenemos el honor de tenerlos con nosotros uh, mientras continuamos a planear para el futuro de Porsche de Plains. Espero trabajar con todos ustedes a lograr nuestros objetivos. Gracias, amigos. There's never a bad time for an old boom. But the good fortunes everyone anticipates with the development of the Klein Shell could not be better timed for San Angelo or for how we can be a benefit to the Porsche to Plains effort. As you've all heard by now, the Klein Shell play is projected to be mammoth, unlike anything West Texas and the prolific Permian Basin have ever experienced. Reportedly, the Klein Shell will dwarf the $25 billion economic impact the Eagle Ford Shell had on 20 South Texas counties. And that was just in 2011 alone. Further, consider that within eight years, the Eagle Ford will have launched some 117,000 new jobs. Again, the economic ripples from the Klein Shell could swell into a figurative uh, tidal wave even compared to the sonic oil booms that shook West Texas in the 1970s and the 1980s. There's been a fair amount of hand wringing about the challenges that will come with the Klein Shell. Some folks fret that heavy traffic will pulverize our roadways. Others worry our water supply, which remains a precarious state, can't possibly accommodate the inflow of more people. Some shudder at the prospect of a seismic culture change. They grumble about everything from longer lines in supermarkets and restaurants to roughnecks raising heck in every three-stooled watering hole in town. <laughs> to, our, to our citizenry, offer this assurance. The sky is not falling. Chicken little does not work at City Hall. Those of us responsible for a whole host of public services, from building permits to parks to economic development, look at the client shell not as a threat, but as a golden opportunity. We're, ha we're being handed the uh, reins to a gift horse. Now is not the time to examine the teeth. That said, we refuse to be Pollyanna about the challenges. However, there's not a one of those challenges that can't be resolved with some foresight, with some strategic planning, and with some steady hands at the helm. It's that exact same approach that will assure, also assure San Angelo reaps maximum benefits from the revenue spikes we are already seeing. Sales tax receipts are at a record high. They jumped 12% to nearly $23 million in 2012. Hotel tax receipts are also at record highs, having risen 37% in 2012. Home sales last year barely missed topping $200 million for the first time ever. The, the even better news is that the best economic news is yet to come. Let's talk for a moment about what this means for the taxpaying San Angelo and then for San Angelo's role in the Porsche to Plains Alliance. For our citizens, greater economic activity sparked by more jobs and higher wages means the city will collect more sales tax revenues. In return, or in turn, San Angelo's municipal government will not have to be as reliant on property taxes as it has been historically. Consider this, sales tax collections represented 32% of Odessa's revenue budget last year. The sales tax accounted for 33% of Midland's budget. San Angelo's sales tax made up a mere 24% of our revenue budget. 
As a result, San Angelo must rely more heavily on property taxes. Since 2000, the property tax rate has been whittled from 86.83 cents down to 78.1 cents. Coupled with a higher demand for housing, which will raise property values, more sales tax revenue will give the city council greater leeway to reduce the property tax rate more substantially than ever it has ever done before. At the same time, the increased tax revenues will allow San Angelo to invest in its infrastructure more substantially than it ever has before. This year, San Angelo increased the amount it spends on street maintenance by more than a million dollars. That increase nearly tripled what was budgeted the prior year. Still, that's the proverbial drop in the bucket. San Angelo's most badly needed street reconstruction project, which is uh, the rebuilding of Bell Street, would cost about $10 million alone. And that's more than five times what the city's entire capital budget is this year, and that's $1.75 million. The past two weeks, we have hosted public forums on the city's proposed five-year capital improvement plan. If we were to fund every project in the current draft of that plan, the total cost would come out to $450 million. That's nearly three and a half times the city's current operating budget of $134 million. While we expect the impact of the client show to be big, we know that it won't be that big. So we must be strategic about what we invest, invest in and how we invest in that. That process is already underway. Two of our current capital improvement projects should be of particular interest to oilfield developers and to the Ports to Plains Alliance. That's the San Angelo Regional Airport's terminal is being transformed by a $5.9 million rehabilitation. The completion of that project is in 2014 will complement the airport's new concourse. San Angelo's highest priority, the capital improvement, is a $120 million development of the Hickory Aquifer. That groundwater source will greatly supplement our surface water supply. The infrastructure will include up to 16 wells, a booster pump station, a treatment facility, and a 62-mile pipeline, which could begin delivering water to San Angelo as early as this summer. Even so, San Angelo has begun looking ahead to its next new water source. A newfound partnership with Midland and Abilene is scouring the possibilities for tapping water sources that could serve all three cities and the region as well. Stay tuned for more of that later. In addition to the formal capital improvement plan process in, uh, required by our city charter, later this month the city council will convene in a day-long strategic planning workshop to establish short-term priorities. That's, of course, the first step to, toward uh, setting and achieving our long-term goals. Strategically improving our infrastructure, including a plan for how that can be funded, will certainly be among a top, some of our top goals. As we study how best to improve our infrastructure, and by that we mean streets, water systems, the airport, our industrial park, and other needs, We'll make those capital improvements with an eye toward how we can optimize our opportunities in the Ports to Plains corridor. The key, of course, is planning. Mapping a course for where we want to be and how we're going to get there. Returning for a moment to the challenges and opportunities of the clan shell, that planning process has begun. Last week, a group of community leaders and public servants gathered to begin discussing how San Angelo can best address issues of housing, workforce development, education and training, and economic development. Some individuals from that group are contact contacting our peers in Midland and Odessa to see what lessons we, we can learn from their vast experience in dealing with the booms and the busts of the oil field. At the same time, I'm weighing how we can best plan within our own organization for the challenges and opportunities posed by the Klein Shell and the Porsche to Plains. Last week, I met with the city manager of Midland, Texas, uh, Mr. Courtney Sharp, and we had a good discussion about what they went through with the oil boom and, and the, uh, uh, you know, the inevitable busts that come along with that. 
he gave me a grin from ear to ear. Uh, he uh, is looking forward to sharing that information with me. I asked him what would he have done differently? What would the community of Midland have done differently had they known what they know now? So uh, we'll be meeting next week uh, to discuss you know, what he would have done differently. Again, he gave me a grin from ear to ear, so that tells me he has a lot of information for me. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. This I do know, without clearly defined action steps and measurable outcomes, even the best intention planning becomes mere wandering in the dark. I am a steadfast advocate of a 10-step strategic mapping process that, in my experience, has proven to be fail-proof. Regardless of the issues tackled, this process yields the necessary action steps and the performance measures that ensures a successful resolution. It's a process on which I'll soon be personally training my top tier of directors. That's partly because that 10-step mapping process is how I'd like, to, like for us to approach the strategic planning necessary to address complex opportunities such as a client shell play, how best to plan, prioritize, and fund capital improvements, and how to ensure that San Angelo remains a central player in the Ports to Plains corridor. When it comes to the latter, a bedrock has already been laid that puts us in a prime position to be of symbiotic benefit to the Ports to Plains Alliance. The first benefit comes courtesy, frankly, of chance and happenstance. San Angelo, San Angelo is ideally located smack dab in the middle of the Porsche to Plains corridor. Our community is close enough to the Texas-Mexico border that we could easily serve as an inland port on customs facilities. Or customs facility, I'm sorry. Imagine sealed containers rumbling across the border to be opened and inspected in a warehouse facility in San Angelo. The benefits to the community is obvious, jobs. The benefit to the importers and exporters is that such a facility and arrangement would bypass the congestion at the current border stop in Laredo. Right now, regardless of the day or the time of day, a line of tractor trailers is queued up as far as I can see at the border inspection stations. As those goods sit, parked for hours at a time, the seller's expense, expenses are rising and profits are dwindling. It's the old economic 101 lesson, time equals, time equals money. An inland port slashes the time, thereby boosting the profits. San Angelo is also fortunate to have two key part, ports to plains components in place, and that's its highways and its railways. While we do not have an interstate, we have the next best thing, four lane and, two, and super two highways from Lubbock to Sonora. Who wants to bet which route a trucker would choose? Would that be the West Texas swing or crawling along the Interstate 35 through San Angelo, through Austin and Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex? The I-35 corridor adds time to every drive while slowly stripping years from the lifespan of exasperated drivers. The key now is to convince the Texas Department of Transportation to complete that Super 2 highway from Sonora to Del Rio, at which point we essentially have the equivalent of an interstate highway from the border to the panhandle. Please feel unconstrained tomorrow about lobbying our keynote speaker, and that's our Texas Transportation Commissioner, Fred Underwood, to make that happen. As I mentioned, San Angelo can also boost a braille, something that other West Texas communities lack. Our friends and partners with Texas Pacifico Railroad, notably Federico Diaz Page and of course uh, Elizabeth Grindstaff, are committed to developing this line to ease the flow of goods from Mexico to Texas and beyond. We could, we could persuasively argue that this attract, attractive mix of roadway and railway makes San Angelo not just a logical location, but the ideal location for a multimodal or intermodal facility. That sort of operation would seamlessly transition goods from one transportation system to another. Again, this would translate to jobs for our citizens and profits for the facility's customers. Truly a win-win scenario. Lastly, when you think about the predominant industries in and around San Angelo, agriculture and energy, the fruits of those sectors add value to the Ports to Plains. 
We're seeing that with the oil field boom already. Sand used in the fracking process is moving through San Angelo by the train loads. Drilling equipment is doing the same via tractor trailers. That won't stop for years, that we do know. But let's take a moment about, let's, t let's talk a moment about the agriculture. Its uh, impact on the Concho Valley economy cannot be overstated. The Concho Valley raises, uh, grows, and produces 336 million worth of agricultural products and commodities annually. In total, agribusiness contributes nearly $623 million to the area economy on a yearly basis. Beef production generates annual sales of $104 million. Only California and Wyoming have more sheep than the Concho Valley's 13 counties. No state has more goats than the Concho Valley. More than half of the sheep and a quarter of the goats in Texas are raised in this area. The Concho Valley accounts for 42% of the state's wool and mohair sales. Only four states produce more wool than this area. Cash receipts for cotton eclipse $60 million per year. Wheat and sorghum sales account for another $37 million. All of those products, whether they are belled or on the hoof, have to make it to the market somehow, some way, usually by roadway or railway. For most of the sheep and goats, that journey begins at producer's livestock auction. Producers is the busiest livestock auction house in the United States and a San Angelo institution for the past 58 years. Producers receive, producers receives and loads livestock 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It has long been the nation's leading sheep and goat market selling to buyers from across the United States and Mexico. And it's not just sheep, goats, and cattle raised in the Concho Valley that are paraded through the producer sales ring, then shipped to every other region of the county. Ranchers from across the United States send the livestock, their livestock to San Angelo to sell. And again, those animals must be transported to processing plants elsewhere. As I alluded to earlier, it's not only the meat that yields business. San Angelo has long been and remains one of the world's wool and mohair capitals. Like the animals from whence they came, those fibers are shipped via roads and rails, either to domestic mills or to ports destined for plants overseas. The same, of course, is true of that other natural fiber, the king of cash crops in West Texas, cotton. Because this area is blessed with cotton gems and feed mills, it's also plausible that if it makes economic sense, Raw cotton and grains could be delivered here from processing, for processing before being sent to textile mills, stockyards, and feed stores. Again, because of where we are and who we are, the partnerships we are building with imports to Plains are ripe with potential and possibility. I want to mention two other reasons why San, Angelo, San Angelo's role within the Reliance could be and should be key. One, for a community our size, San Angelo is remarkably politically connected. This community on several occasions has stared down the prospect of the Pentagon or Capitol Hill shutting down Goodfellow Air Force Base. Goodfellow employs 5,000 military and civilian workers, making it far and away San Angelo's largest employer. As goes Goodfellow, so goes San Angelo. During each round of base closures and realignments, local community, political, and business leaders have made the case not only for keeping our flightless Air Force base, but for growing its mission, its infrastructure, and its workforce. That, my friends, is political stroke. San Angelo is also represented by two of the Texas legislature's most effective lawmakers, State Representative Drew Darby, who we heard Michael Reeves talk about earlier, serves as a, on the powerful Appropriations Committee, which makes budgetary decisions, and on the Higher Education Committee. He also chairs a politically powerful redistricting committee. Representative Darby recently formed the House Energy Caucus, a group of 40 House members focusing on 
policies related to oil and gas production. He and his caucus should be major players in state energy policy during the current legislative session. In the Texas Senate, State Senator Robert Duncan chairs the Committee on State Affairs and serves on the Education, Higher Education, Finance, and Natural Resource Committees. It's also worth noting that our own chamber president, Phil Neighbors, has proven to be an effective lobbyist on a wide range of issues, and that San Angelo may have no better political advocate than the new president of Angela State University, Dr. Brian May. Dr. May has decades of government, governmental relations experience dating back to his days leading the Mohair Council of America, where he helped develop overseas markets. He has cultivated many congressional and legislative friendships related to his higher education advocacy and his, has made many other efforts on behalf of his adopted hometown. In fact, Dr. May would have been here today if not for the fact that he's uh, glad handing or, uh, or arm twisting at this point for more monies for Angela State uh, in Austin. We wish him well in that endeavor and we, we're sure he'll do very well. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, San Angelo has a true and abiding belief in, and faith in Porsche de Plains. And not only because of what it could do for us, we want winning situations for all of our Porsche de Plains partners, from our friends and amis in Canada to our Mexican amigos. San Angelo is all in. You've seen it in the time, energy, and effort invested by folks such as Charlotte Farmer, Elizabeth Grindstaff, Sean Lewis, and, Lake, and Luke Brain. And you'll continue to see it from me, my staff, and our community. Although Porsche to Plains is an entirely different set of circumstances, like the Klein Shell, it represents an opportunity for San Angelo. Long after the percolating hubbub of black gold has subsided, we fully expect trains and trucks loaded with some variation of goods to be rolling to and through our city. We not only aim to be ready for that, we will be ready for that. I thank you all.